What up, family? It's your man, Daryl Alder the second. I hope you're doing well. Hopefully you can hear me. Um, I got the AC blaring because as y'all know, it is hot out there. Um, God has been really speaking to me a lot about peace and I want to share what he put in my heart. Uh, before I do, you know the drill. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this word. I thank you for what you put in my spirit to share. And Lord, I speak your peace over all these people, Father, the peace that only you can provide. You are Jehovah Shalom, Lord, and in your word, it is very clear that you are the Prince of Peace, Jesus. So as this word is brought forth, I thank you that people will get the opportunity to hear about you, Lord, and get the opportunity to receive your peace so that they can understand that no matter what they're facing, you are the one that can bring peace to their hearts, peace to their minds, and take away their anxieties. You said in the word, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, make your our request known unto you through prayer and supplication and with thanksgiving. And then your peace that surpasses our understanding will guard our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So I declare it on every listener today in Jesus' mighty name. And I repent of anything I've done, knowing or unknowing, in your name. Amen. All right, y'all. God has been really speaking to me about that because I've had scenarios in my life and at my job where people would recognize that I'd be cool. I'd be collected when there's a lot of calamity around. And it's not because I'm superhuman or anything of the sort. It's a nice thought, but it ain't the case. The reality is I put my mind and my affection on the Lord. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah, he who keeps his mind on him, him shall be in perfect peace. He who keeps his mind on me, that person should be in perfect peace. That's what I do. And the Bible also says, cast your cares upon the Lord for he cares for you. I do that. Jesus said, come to me all who are heavy laden, who are burdened and who are weary and I will give you rest. I do that continuously. And the scripture I said in my prayer, um, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, make your request known unto God through prayer and with supplication and with thanksgiving. And then the peace of God that surpasses your heart and mind, well, I mean, surpasses your understanding will guard your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. I do that. And that just means confessing to the Lord, giving my anxieties to him. I don't even want to claim anxiety. I just say when I feel anxious or fearful, I give it to him. And then he provides me with peace that keeps me in check. In addition to that, when I find myself in situations where maybe I don't feel like I have the words to pray, I mean, sometimes I pray in my heavenly language or speaking in tongues, but sometimes I just sit still and make a decision to trust. I sit still and even when it's chaotic on the outside, I learn to trust. I tune my attention to him and I trust. The book of Philippians chapter four, I believe it's verse 12. It says, whatsoever is true, whatsoever is noble, whatsoever is worthy of praise, whatsoever is of good report, think on these things. So I set my attention on him and then I make up in my heart, Lord, I trust you. And I give it to him and then I give him gratitude because I know that everything I'm going through, he's gonna work it out for my good. Romans 8, 28 says, all things work together for the good of those who love God and who are called according to his purpose. I'm simply telling you, the reason I have peace is because I put my attention on him and I give my stress to him. I, like I said it before, in the midst of the tornado, I believe, they said the most peaceful place in the tornado is in the eye of the storm, which is the center. Inside that place, you're calm. But when you go outside of that, in the midst of those funnels, that's when chaos occurs. In our life, when everything is chaotic around you, like a tornado funnel, stay in the center, in the eye of the storm, meaning fix your attention on him. So I wanna read this scripture to you um, so that you can get more clarity on this. It's in Mark chapter four, verse 39, and it goes, um, actually, let me start in verse 36. Now, when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was, and other little boats were also with him, and a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat so that, he was that it was already filling. But he was in the stern, asleep on a pillow. And they awoke him and said to him, teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. But he said to them, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said to one another, who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? That's authority right there. But Jesus was the Prince of Peace. He spoke peace over that, of that wind and that water. And perhaps when he said, peace be still, it was a double message to them, a double entendre for them to recognize they need peace and they need to be still. And so when you're going through chaos in your life and it's crazy around you, sometimes you just need to be still and sit in the peace of the Lord. For in doing so, he'll keep you contained. Bishop Del Bronner said that when a boat is surrounded by calamity with the water, the boat ain't gonna sink. He said, it's when the water gets in the boat, that's when the boat begins to sink. And he was saying the water represents the fear. When we allow fear to come into our hearts, it starts to affect us inside. And so I encourage you when you allow fear or when fear comes in your heart, give it to the Lord. The Bible says perfect love, cast out fear. Ask God to kick that love out. I mean, that fear out, that mature love to kick that, that fear out. 
So I just wanna encourage you today, like, share, comment, subscribe. My name is Daryl Alder the second. I'm on YouTube, I'm on Facebook, and I'm on Instagram. I hope this word blessed you. For anybody watching, if you don't have a relationship with God the Father, the only way to have one is to first have one with his son. You can't get to the Father except through him, and he said that. So if you want to have a relationship with Jesus, just repeat after me. And before I tell you, as a disciple of Jesus, it is a blessing, because you're gonna go to heaven, you're not going to hell, your name is written in the book of life, there will be times you'll be persecuted, but the Bible makes it clear. Blessed are you when men revile you, speak all manner of evil against you falsely for his name's sake, for great is your reward in heaven. For as they did to you, they did to those prophets before you. So just understand when you're persecuted for doing the will of the Lord, it's a sign that you belong to him and that his spirit rests upon you. So just understand that because sometimes people want to just be a Christian and they don't want to face persecution and troubles and trials. And that's just not the truth. Jesus said, make sure you know what you're getting into. He will protect you and bless you because I'm preaching it because I live it. But I just want to encourage you so you're not caught off guard. And I recommend when you do give your life to the Lord, get yourself in a Bible-based church and watch God transform your life. So just repeat after me if you're interested. Lord Jesus, I believe you died on the cross. I believe God the Father raised you back from the dead. I ask you to come into my heart and be my Lord and my Savior. If you meant that the spirit of God now lives in you, you are born again. Get in a Bible-based church, get baptized in water because you gotta be born of water and the spirit and get you a Bible and watch God transform your life. I hope this word encouraged you and blessed you. Those who don't know Jesus and refuse, I pray you get to know him because when you die, there's only a heaven and a hell. And if you don't know him, you ain't going to heaven. And he don't want you to go to hell, but he gives you the freedom to decide where you wanna go. Be blessed, be encouraged, peace.